Some roads are just pieces of tarmac, connecting site A to site B, but other roads echo with decades of history. Locations where the top motorcycle manufacturers and riders honed their machines and their engineering skills. Where riders from all over the world forged their own epic tales and wrote themselves into history, legend and folklore. But also roads where tragedy was too often experienced. With machines and riders pushed right to the limit where the slightest mistake or mechanical breakdown could have devastating consequences for rider and spectator alike. As a child in the 1980s, I regularly attended the Ulster Grand Prix on these very roads, and I've had a strange relationship with road racing ever since. I find myself irresistibly drawn to the sheer drama and excitement of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing at 200 miles per hour, but equally pushed away by the continual tragedy and the heartbreak of the loss of my heroes. Too many times have I developed a bond with a rider only to see their life tragically cut short. There has been so much sadness and loss over the years. And yet, the irresistible allure of road racing still beckons, drawing us all back in. I've returned to the track today to take you out on a tour of the circuit on my Scrambler 400. Enjoy the history and the beauty of this place, as the evocative soundtrack of a single piston thumper echoes across the landscape once again. of over 20 bikes would start here together and hurtle down this street known as the Flying Kilo. These are public roads and the maximum speed that I'll be going at today is around 60 miles per hour, while the racers get closer to 200. The full lap distance is around 7.5 miles and it took me over 9 minutes to complete at an average speed of less than 50 miles per hour. The lap record set in 2019 by Peter Hickman took only three and a half minutes at an average speed of 136.4 miles per hour. The riders soon reach this set of flowing corners known as the rock bends. But the race bikes are travelling around three times faster than I am right now. What appear to be open, easy corners at my speed become tight technical turns for the racers at the speed at which they travel. In fact, you could play this video back at about three times speed and it would give you a good idea of what the riders experience. The racers have to brake hard for this right-hander before blasting out at full throttle down the straight, tucked in behind each other to take advantage of the slipstream from the bike in front. Bikes are often only a few millimetres apart as they reach insane speeds the hedges lining the road nothing more than a blur of green and the sound of race engines at high revs echoing around the surrounding hills. While it's not that clear on camera, this straight is at a significant angle and the riders and bikes endure a severe compression at the foot of the hill. Before then racing up towards Deer's Leap, a blind, off-camber right-hand corner over the crest of a hill that induces wheelies at nearly 200 miles per hour. This corner can be tricky enough in a car even at normal highway speeds and bikes are easily unsettled as the ground falls away beneath the wheels. The sheer commitment required is something only a few people ever possess. The view opens up as we crest the hill with Loch Ness and the Antrim Plateau visible in the distance. It's a beautiful part of the world but the racers don't have any time to take in the scenery. For over a hundred years Various different vehicles have raced in these roads, including Formula One cars in the 1950s. Sir Sterling Moss himself won the RAC Tourist Trophy here in 1955, but that race saw three driver fatalities 
and the end of four-wheel racing at this circuit. The riders again come close to 200 miles per hour before braking for the long sweeping right-hander at Cochrane's Town. Accelerating hard, the trees lining the road only enhance the impression of speed. It's a fine day today, but often this race will be run in heavy rain, with only the very worst weather conditions resulting in cancellations. The racers cover this short stretch in the blink of an eye, tucked in behind the windshield before popping up to take advantage of the air resistance to assist in braking for the next right-hander known as Quarterlands. There's a junction here, but on race day, the track is marked out with temporary curbs, braking point markers and painted white lines. The track then banks swiftly around to the left for Ireland's corner. It is here that the rider Guy Martin endured a dramatic crash at nearly 170 miles per hour while leading on the last lap of the Superbike race in 2012. Guy miraculously escaped with his life but suffered significant injuries from which he is now thankfully fully recovered. He went on to release a series of must-watch documentaries in which he breaks several world speed records. Following Ireland's corner is a sweeping right-hander known as Lockers. This is the fastest corner on the track. Lockers opens out into a right-hand bend formerly known as the Windmill but renamed to Joey's Windmill in order of Joey Dunlop's record 48 wins over this circuit including 24 at the Ulster Grand Prix itself. Joey also has a section of the Isle of Man TT circuit named after him where a statue of him with his iconic Honda motorcycle overlooks the Bungalow Bend, now known simply as Joey's. Dunlop's record of 26 TT wins seemed untouchable, but was finally broken just this year by his own nephew, Michael Dunlop. Michael went on to record a record 29th win during the 2024 TT Race Week. This small corner of Europe has produced many sporting icons like George Best and Rory McIlroy who are known all over the world. But it's the name Dunlop that takes pride of place in the hearts of many from here. We continue up the hill with the bikes again reaching speeds approaching 200 miles per hour. Anyone that comes here has a reaction of shock and disbelief at the sheer speed of the riders as they race through the course, often just side by side. It's genuinely difficult to comprehend and no video can do justice to the drama of the real life experience. At the top of the hill we pass a tight right-hander known as Wheeler's Corner, where the riders have to brake hard to touch the apex before opening the throttle wide again. We're starting to close in on the finish line now, and this short straight and the next few corners are the riders' last chance to take the lead and win the race. We're soon into Tornograph, a tight left-hander followed by a mild chicane and another left-hand turn. A beautiful view of the city of Belfast, nestled in the Lagan Valley, opens up in the background as we continue down towards the Lindsay Hairpin, a road junction that becomes a hairpin bend when these roads are used as a racetrack. Many a race has been won or lost here as riders make a last ditch effort to get to the front of the pack before the finish line. It's a popular viewing spot and there's generally a grandstand erected here during race week. The last time this race was won was in 2019 and while there have been efforts to stage the race since then, financial issues and the difficulty of obtaining insurance for an event like this have prevented any reruns. There is still hope however that it will run again in the future. The popular and historic event attracted spectators from all over Europe. It seems possible and even likely that a sponsor might see the value of this event and allow the race to continue into the future. Following the fast left-hander at the Flobog Road Junction, the track opens out one last time as we come into quarries, a right then left sequence that looks tame at these speeds but becomes technical at full race velocity. The final corner is called Dawson's Bend and it's a long right-hander that opens out into the start-finish straight. 
I still find it impossible to comprehend lapping this track at an average speed of over 130 miles an hour. It just doesn't seem possible to have an average that's over twice the top speed that I hit today. The levels of skill, of focus and of bravery required are truly exceptional. I really hope they find a way to run this event again in the future. And if they do, you're all welcome to come here and join me and we can experience it together. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Take care.